Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have the privilege of Dr. Kalyan Raman's company. Dr. Kalyan Raman, welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram Ayer. Now, uh, Dr. Kalyan Raman, as you all know, has appeared in many of our videos before, but he has made one astounding discovery that we are going to talk about today. So, uh, Dr. Kalyan Raman, you found something new that is absolutely astounding. What is it that uh, you found and how did you come about this discovery? Yeah. You know, I have been studying the Rig Veda mm. and the importance of the Rastri Suptam mm. in making a country rich. Mm. Rastri. What are the ingredients to make it rich? The artisans, their skills and using the resources of the earth. Mm. Then I found in the Indus script, in the process of decipherment, a lot of references to the metallurgical and trading in gems and jewels which created the wealth of the nation. So I was wondering how there was there any link, is there any evidence possible to prove the link between the Rig Veda and the Indus Valley Civilization or the Saraswati Civilization and the reasonable framework for establishing a chronology between the Vedic culture and the Indus script as a writing system for purpose of trade. One thing is very clear as far as the Indus script is concerned. It was a wide ranging transaction in an extensive area, both to the east of India and to the west of India, right up to Haifa mm. in uh, Israel, Israel yeah. and up to Laos, Cambodia in uh, the ancient Far East. Mm. So the, apparently the uh, river systems, the Brahmaputra, the Ganga, the Saraswati, and the waterways of the Persian Gulf, Tigris Euphrates, Mediterranean and the fact that these are all riverine maritime based cultures mm. and even the ancient Far East, there is a lot of activity along the sea, mm. along the Indian Ocean and I was surprised to find a shipwreck in Ayn Sukhna mm. on the Red Sea, a port north of Suez where they found catamarans, the Sewn boats. Right, right. They were sewn by Kaya, okay. the Kaya from Kerala. So a, a French investigating team found that the possibility of the boats having been made in Kerala using the sewn boat technique, using the beautiful pictures that were presented and the video also was presented by the team. This was dated to the 19th century before Common Era. Mm. 1900 BC. BC before that. Mm. And we are talking of the civilization date from about 1900 BCE to 3300 BCE, mm. where seals have been found, sites have been found. Right. So, so the to, to put it in context, Rig Veda. So you are trying to establish a timeline between Rig Veda and the civilizations that thrived in Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Saraswati, and so on. And so forth. Yeah, not only the timeline, but also the cultural framework. Yes. That governed the Rig Vedic uh, metaphors. Mm. The timeline and the cultural activity that governed the Indus script documentation and the river waterways as the link and the maritime trade that is taking place mm. from the ancient Far East to the ancient Near East. So it's a very challenging area with uh, very difficult to correlate the information but surprisingly I found documentary evidence in the literature, mm. in the text, in the text themselves. And surprise, there was also found some archaeological evidences from the narratives that are written down on ancient art artifacts. Mm -hmm. For example, recently I found two silver cups from the so called Bactria area near Afghanistan, which contain some narratives. Mm -hmm. And one narrative was about this tiny. On the top portion of the cup, silver cup or vase. There were about eight people seated mm. and they were like priests. They were doing something active, some activity was going on there. Then at the bottom register, some agricultural activity, some farmers tilling the soil. Like this, there are two other cups were found where they showed people riding on a chariot and, and was indulging in warfare activity. So there was there were two levels of activity. One is working with the resources of the earth itself for proper agriculture 
And the second activity was working with the resources of the earth and the oceans, mining, mm. metals. And I found, to my surprise, the enormous material that is available in the Rigveda about working with metals. We were clearly working with fire, we were fire workers. They were respecting the Agni. The very first uh, Suktam, the Ilcha of the Rigveda, starts with the Agni Mele Purohitam and producing gems and wealth. The central core of the Rigvedic narrative refers to the activities of the people in creating wealth. So wealth was not uh, something you know, uh, to be ignored. It has to be acquired. It has to be desired. So the desire for acquisition of wealth was the binding principle of the entire structure of the Rigveda. And I found a French scholar referring to the fact that the central portion of the Rigveda relates to the processing of a commodity mm. called Soma. The Is it Soma liquor? No, it's not. Okay. That's rare the way they meant. It's a metaphor mm. for a liquid. It's mm. a metaphor for a liquid. Okay. Soma is purchased mm. from traders coming from Mount Mujavant. We have to locate where mm. that location is. Mm. Possibly it is north of Kashmir, mm. north of the Himalayas in Kyrgyzstan. Mm. There is a place called Mushtar Mata. Mm. That could be the Mujavant. Mm -hmm. And that's a mining area where gold was available, silver was available, pyrites were available, and even today the mining is taking place there. Mm. So the traders were coming in, they were uh, negotiated, water transaction took place, the traders were given some gold and cows and all that, and some was purchased. And then the processing began. What are the processing in fire? The processing is in, done in a number of so-called egnas. Mm. For example, the Samaveda reports about 12 types of Ignas, Soma Samstha Yagas. And every one of these Yagas runs for days and nights. There are one Atiratra Yagda runs for five days and nights continuously. Mm. So, what type of product called Soma could have withstood the intensity of the fire for this five extended days, duration? Right, right. It is if it was only just by mere uh, plants or mushrooms or uh, roots of uh, vegetable products, it would have been reduced to mere ash, mm. only Vibhuti would have been left. There is something else that is going on here. So we have not fully understood the metaphors. So in my exploration into finding out archaeological evidences for proving the activities of the Rigvedic times, this uh, silver vase that was reported mm. from a museum called Miho Museum in Japan. Mm. This has been recorded off and on about in one or two articles by Adelino Hansen, who is the wife of the Hansen who did the work on Mojadaro. Mm. And she reports, look on the top of it there seems to be some kind of a ritual and they are wearing some cloth with some trefoils mm. which seem to be comparable to the Mojadaro priest. Mm. There I got the lead. So that's th those were all priests. They were priests. Mm. They were not working uh, some kind of a ritual. Mm. They were priests. What type of priests were they? And the Veda contains evidence of. We, we're going to show a picture of this. Uh, oh my God! It's an amazing picture. Yeah. It's so, so beautiful. So you understand the context uh, that yes. we are referring to. Please continue. And there are lots of more pictures. I mean, more by the silver vases. But then the context is, the eight priests are sitting there. Mm. And the eight priests are mentioned in the Rigveda. And one of the priests is called Potru. Potru is explained as a purifier priest. Mm. He's a purifier. What was he purifying? He was removing the alkaline substances from the mineral ores and pyrites and creating pure metal. Another surprise comes from a brilliant piece of literary work by George Pinot a French linguist who has compiled a dictionary called the Tocharian Dictionary, mm. Tocharian A, Tocharian B, both Tetum and Zetum languages. There he finds a term, a number of similar connected expressions called Anchu, mm. Anchuasi, Anchua. And Anchu in Tocharian 
which is an Indo-European language, the meaning is iron mm. metal. And he says, this Anshu could have come from Rigvedic Amshu. Mm. And Rigvedic Amshu is Soma. Mm. So a synonym for Soma is Amshu. Mm. So we have a clear clue here. And then the Rigveda mentions some purification process involving the fleece of uh, goats mm. and sheep. The goat, so called golden fleece, mm. where you know the panners of uh, gold from the river uh, beds, they would see it through this uh, fleece, this uh, mm. sheep uh, wool, wool uh, uh, skin, and then get the nuggets mm. out and the stone process. Right, right. It's some similar to panning for gold. Panning, panning for gold. Take it uh, from and, there. Yeah. And there is also a mention in the Rigveda, a particular rich I will quote it for you, called Avi. Avi mm. is referred to as a sheep. Mm. Avi refers to the fleece, mm. which is used for purifying Soma. Mm. So, a purification process of Soma is explained by the word Avi. Mm. And one of these priests sitting there on silver base holds that fleece. Mm. A picture is coming. Then, another picture where two priests are working with a bowl. Mm. where there are some ingots are kept, maybe gold nuggets or whatever, or, or any metal nuggets or metal ingots. And they are holding two vessels, which are perforated vessels. Mm. The perforated vessels is a very enigmatic phenomenon found in the Saraswati Valley civilization. Mm. Number of sites, number of places. People have been saying what is what is what was using for or uh, mm. what does it use for? Mm. Was it kind of a filter? What was it being used for? What was it used in? Together with fire. Mm. It was in the context of the furnaces and that were found in Kalibangan or uh, Surkotada or Dolavira. They were all there. So the function of these perforated vessels has been a matter of conjecture by a number of archaeologists. And this picture from the silver waste of Bactria shows the perforated vessels together with the ingots. Mm. So these perfor perforated vessels had a function to perform in the context of a purification process. Mm. And the person sitting there apparently is a potru. Mm. Is a what is this word potru? Has it been remembered in our culture? Yes. There are two references. One is in Malayalam, Poti is a Malabar temple priest. Mm -hmm. Poti. Mm. Poti. There is another meaning for this. Potru is a Varaha. Potrin is a snout of a Varaha. Varaha is related to Varahan, mm. Katya Varahan, mm. gold, mm. pure gold. No, no. The second reference to the Poti comes from a stunning phenomenon, cultural phenomenon, which is dominant in Maharashtra, for instance. There, a village supports 12 Balutedars. Mm. Balutedars are artisans. Mm. They may be workers in uh, skins, workers, weavers, the barbers and includes a one term called Potadara. Mm. Who is a Potadara? Potadara is a metallurgist, an expert metallurgist who will be able to assay metal, assay the coins to figure out what material it's made of, whether it's silver mm. coin or copper it's coin. Or kind of it's, a, it's a shaft. Mm. He's a treasurer. Potadara is a treasurer. He mm. carries a bag, Poti. Mm. So that Potadara is called Poddar. Mm. Oh, in, I see. In Oriya. Okay. Poddar in Bengali. Mm. This Potru, Potadara, is a very important functionary of the village. So important that the village produce is divided among these Balutadars mm. equally. Mm. So that means a common wealth was an operation in the society where all the working class people, artisans, belong to different work, work, mm. uh, activities of the village, of the Janapada, were sharing the produce. Mm -hmm. So it was the produce of uh, the land was not restricted to only the agriculturist or the farmer. It was shared among these people. Mm. It is called a Balzada sharing system, common wealth. Mm. So this seems to be also very clear in the indescript inscriptions, where an animal is shown in front of a feeding trough. Feeding trough is a metaphor. Patra, it's a patar. Patar is a feeding trough. Mm -hmm. Patar is a goldsmith guild. Mm. So the artisans who are working with this feeding trough or this guild are sharing the resources among themselves 
and taking all the produce and the wealth they create by barter transactions into the treasury and sharing the wealth. Mm. This gives the clue to explain the great, uh, brilliant economic historian's work, Angus Madison, who did for the European Union, right. for OECD. Wealth of Nations. Yeah. Wealth of Nations. In continuation to our, uh, with our topic, how do you correlate Angus Madison's work with what you have found in the Rig Veda and uh, the metallurgical aspect of that? Angus Madison's work is a masterpiece. He documents the economic history of the world for more than 2000 years from one common era and finds to his surprise that India accounted for 33% of the world GDP in one common era. China accounted only for 25%. And the contribution of India even in 1700 was up to 27%. How did this come about in terms of GDP? What are the factors of production? Land, labor, capital, organization. So we have seen that there is a common wealth in operation in India, could have been operated at that time also, based on the indescript and other evidences, that the wealth was shared among the people. So they took only what was necessary for their day-to-day -day life, the stuff it was commonly shared. Right. So it could be distributed in a common wealth. Capital. There was some wealthy fellow who was able to finance transactions for a maritime trade or initial capital required for mining and so on and so forth. Then land and labor skill of the artisan in creating these artifacts like Siri Purdue, last wax technique, bronze articles and so on and so forth, or the new alloys that they were inventing. A rapid invention of alloys was taking place. Just as copper got added to tin to create bronze, they started creating a metal called Bharata. What is Bharata? Bharata? Is it, does the name of our country come from this? Maybe. Bharatanche Bhande. In Marathi means Bharata is an alloy made of copper, pewter, tin. Oh, I see. I see. Bharata. Bharata oh. is a very specific, Baran it's called in Punjabi. So with the specific composition of ratios of copper, pewter and tin, Bharata is created. There is an animal which shows Bharat, Bharat, the old so locks. What exactly is the mineral composition of pewter? Pewter is a composition of copper, tin, zinc. Oh, so zinc is a new element. Uh, new element. Okay, 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 okay. So okay. copper plus zinc creates brass. Shiny, almost like gold. Right, right. So the sattva, sattva is the zinc. Sattva, which adds value to the alloy. Satya, sattva, the swastika. Swastika symbol which is very common in the industry. Right, right. Is sattva. Mm -hmm. So zinc. So they had obviously a capability to process zinc through sublimation process. It's amazing. So that means they were working with a variety of resources of alloying material together with copper. And they were also working with iron. They were also creating copper, uh, steel mm -hmm. components. The, for, for which India became famous, Alexander came here to receive this sword from Purushottama mm -hmm. as a gift. So the, the metallurgical activity was a very major component of the wealth creating activity. It was traded, bartered, Apart from the cultivation and weaving, cotton evidences that there, right to 7th millennium BC. Silk was worked on well before China. Silk uh, threads have been found, archaeological context in Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. So silk, cotton, farm production, pulses. Was the silk farming done any different from what it is done today? When, for example, you actually kill the silk worm after some time and uh, because it wraps the silk around itself when it uh, creates the silk and it's a very unhuman, I mean, it feels bad because you, in order to get the silk you have to kill the silk worm. I do not know. Mm. In fact, not much of the work has been done on the sources of uh, silk fibre and the way it is processed in Kanji Puram or in Kashi, Benaras silk and all that. But it was a very important component, it was well, well desired. The cotton cloth is well known, it was desired. So the synth means, itself means cotton, synth cotton it's called. Right. So the area of where the cotton came from is clearly from the, the civilization. You know the Dhaka silk, the muslin mm -hmm. that could be made. Right. So the sophisticated that was achieved by the artisans was such that India became the clothier for the world. Correct. So these are the major components of wealth. 
pure pure we got to quantify it so go to the work in process but the fact that india contributed to 33% of the world gdp can be explained from the in the script documentation and from the archaeological finds that seem to link together okay. to create an ancient maritime tin route that existed between hanoi and haifa hanoi in vietnam to haifa in israel you are doing the attack to cutex statement yes that's it exactly <laughs> i call it the ancient maritime tin route <laughs> so the maritime tin route would not only really have depended on the indian ocean rim it could also have passed through brahmaputra ganga saraswati i give you the reason why in the rigveda there is a rishi called gotama rahogana Atapata Brahmana specifically mentions that the Gautama Rahogana went from Kurukshetra eastwards to settle in Sadanira. Mm. Sadanira is a river called Karatoya according to Amara Kosha. That Karatoya is a tributary of the Ganga and Brahmaputra in Bangladesh. I see. Even I today, see. there is a Bogra archaeological site there. Where Bogra means a blacksmith. Mm -hmm. So metal work was going on there. So the Brahmaputra also was a transit route. It was navigable river. Ganga was navigable river, so the navigable resources coming through the cargo of Mekong, Iravati, Salvin could have passed through Bangladesh, through the Bay of Bengal, and through Bhamaputra and Ganga into Rakhine Gadi as a transit point for taking into the city. Possible. Possible. I, I, I am curious. Where does Iravati meet rivers like Brahmaputra and Ganga? The I am. Very narrow point. I see. See, whether 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 there was actually a meeting point or not, but not much work has been done geologically mm -hmm. about the flow of the Himalayan rivers. But these are great Himalayan rivers. And, and we have to remember that rivers, rivers change, change courses. Yes, they do. So you you can't really say that this is exactly where the transfer exactly. happened. Exactly. But I'm I'm curious because whatever this thing happened. since rivers were the main source of navigation it must have been something very close very close so that they could you know take it out of this river and then go to the and then call it airavati airavata the elephant and all right, so right, the right. memories are so intense right so right. deeply ingrained in the culture yes so airavati salvian mekang maganga right they were important rivers right so a lot of contact and beauty linguist scholars from the university of hawaii david snow and others have conclusively proved that the khmer khmer languages khmer languages came from santal puranas mm. so munda munda was the source for by mon khmer languages so they no we able to have a linguistic link and the archaeological link of the dongsal right. puran right. drums right. that are made there so that means we are able to see a clear documentation in the indus script surprise to read the indus script is 8000 inscriptions solid core piece of evidence which can be subject to any cipher cybernetic analysis analysis of uh, cipher codes and all that and i am conclusively can be proved that the entire documentation in the script was a documentation of wealth how do i say that one obelisk was found of salaman asel to a baghdad king a syrian king that's now in british museum it showed some tributes that the salaman has received from very variety of places in one panel of four uh, slabs sculptural friezes it says these are tributes from musiri what musiri we do not know there is a karur musiri or the musiri in uh, yazidi territory <coughs> kurdistan we do not know right but from musiri the tributes came what are the tributes one horned young bull elephant camel monkeys four monkeys and one monkey was dressed like a woman in marathi there is a word called ratni ratni means a donkey a monkey dressed like a woman is a ratni ratna so gems and jewels were offered as tributes the one horned bull kunda singhi fine gold ornament gold offered as a tribute karba kariba iba elephant karba ib ayan offered as a tribute here you go I am curious. Buffalo, Ranga, Buffalo, Ranga again. Pewter tin, Pewter is Ranga. Right. So these are for us attributes because they were in great demand. In fact, at one point in time, tin was as expensive as costly as gold. It was in great demand. So India was the source for tin as a transit point. Hmm. Maybe the Gods came here and our artisans punched the industry and transferred it. 
Um, two two follow-up questions before we terminate this uh, conversation. Um, the uh, unique uh, single uh, horn buffalo did it ever exist? It is a it's a beautiful artifact in the Induscript cipher. Mm. They add parts mm. to create a new feature. I see. So a composite animal can be created right. with three heads, with mm. one body. Okay. All that. Okay. So it's a composition. A bull is taken and one horn is added. Mm. There is a word called singin mm. in Santali, which means a spiny horn. Horned animal. I see. That is Kunda, is the animal. Singin is the happiny horn. So Singi is an ornament god. Mm -hmm. Kunda is fine gold. Mm -hmm. So fine gold, ornament gold. So, so he wanted to combine the components of that wealth. Mm -hmm. Gold, ornament gold, fine gold. So by looking at a seal, one can decipher the quality of the gold also. Yes, absolutely. That means they had achieved a level of understanding the correct wealth of gold. By alloying with copper, you create 22 carats, 24 carat. Yes. So there is a mechanism whereby you can distinguish between a pure gold and an alloyed gold. An electrum, silver, gold silver alloy and the pure gold. So there is a way, way they were able to achieve a remarkable level of precision in metallurgical understanding of the product. That's where the importance of the Potadara comes. See the Potadara shown on that uh, top uh, segment, register of the silver vase or the silver cup shows the priests holding those uh, perforated jars they are the potru purifiers what are they keeping in the jar? some shara, some uh, leaves and all that alkalis which could oxidize baser metals and create leave back pure gold and pure silver mm. so that is the process for which the perforated jar was being used for so he became a verifier priest. He is called Potru. So this Potru being mentioned in this base is an archaeological evidence for the performance of the Yagna by a process of eight people. And the find of a pillar called Upas. In about 20 Upas have been found, which have been recorded by Vogel in a brilliant recording, including Upas from the East Borneo, mm. which very clearly says the inscription because every you pass got accompanies the inscription. It says, I performed a Somayaga, Bahu Savarnaka, rich, rich in gold of variety of metals. So, this component of establishing a Ketu, a symbol, a pronunciation, a proclamation that I have performed the Somayaga became a very important component of declaring and making an announcement as a marketing technique, technique yes. for people to know. That's why we have the marketing technique of the dollar sign. It says, I have got its com metallurgical competence. I'm working with Arka, Sark. Where does work? Chakra come from? Sark. Potter's wheel in Pushto language. It becomes Charka, the spinning wheel, hmm. Chakra. Metonymy. Charka, Chakra. So we don't have to go for the post Indo European, proto Indo European quell to explain Chakra. Chakra can be explained by Sark, how the Pushto language, which refers to a Potter's wheel. And surprise, two potter's wheels were made in bronze in America, dated to 6000 before Common Era. I see. They are available in the British Museum. Do you know how the technique was? Serapadu technique, mm. last wax technique, to create this so right. called amulets. Right, right, right. So, the symbol of the spoked wheel, which occurs four times in the Dolavana spine board, is a clear indication of the wealth creating activity that was going on by the artisans of the Dolavana. And that discovery is a beautiful video made by National Geographic, it's a stunner to watch. The artists were all sitting there and waiting, bated breath to find out what was coming up. Mm. Ten seals inscription came out. Tola Vera signboard. The first signboard in the world making a proclamation of the metallurgical competence of the Indians, of people of Tola Vera. Mm. So the fact that in a silver vase, these priests are shown sitting on top, supported by the agriculturists having the land, it's a clear indication of the importance they were giving for the productive economic activity that is taking place at the point in time, creating the wealth of the nation. I think we have got a reasonable framework for establishing the wealth of the nation through an ancient maritime tin route linking up on oil and IFA. It's possible. Now, um, I, I just have one follow-up question. So, possibly, yagnas were done 
to do some sort of purification process also to make take something that is coarse and get pure form of a metal Actually, because you said five days on and out oh, no, but they would have to do something like that because it's a part of the chemical process absolutely in fact i think they they were so enthralled with the entire process that was going on they were under stuck by the enormity of the resource that the earth was giving them you would take mere earth and sand and stones break them up and put it into fire and how comes something of value exchange value something of wealth so this i think created a sense of wonder is that the magnificent document called the rigveda the chantings which i got to be heard the rashtriya sutra must be heard to understand the significance and the importance the people gave looks as though the entire population was at work with their fire vedis the fire altars they became the central force for determining that we are in a cosmic dance that was taking place with some resources being given to us by the mother earth which are being used so when you create a varaha as a symbol of marketing merchandise or symbol of wealth or the gold pure gold and all that you inscribe the kajuraho varaha with 720 sculptural images of the rishis and munis of the rigveda and put saraswati in and the shanti chasala as a front what is the chasala chasala is the snout of a boar chasala is a wheat shaft coil round uh, like a ring on top of the upa set on fire i set on fire to infuse carbon into molten metal to harden it to make convert iron into steel something was going on so the chasala became a very important activity the burning of the chasala on the top of the upa became a symbol of the wealth creating activity which created that molten iron with liquid liquid form iron into steel which was the demand you could uh, take a little uh, steel button crucible steel beat it down and create a damascus sword which was in demand by alexander mm. so this is what happens so that means the sense of wonder that was created by the fact that the resources of the earth could produce something new some new product that creative activity i think just caught the people's imagination and they render into poetry and chandas so this uh, and the most surprising part of the entire investigation irg is that the so called aryan dravidian divide is bankam aryan mundarika dravidian divide is bankam all the languages put together in fact emano who of the made the dravidian etymological dictionary made a confession in anna university lecture i'm sorry the mystic there was a indian sprag bund a linguistic area what is a linguistic area where people of different language families get together and absorb features from one another and make it their own so that was operation a sprag bund was an operation a linguistic area a language union was functioning where a tamil farmer could end up with a punjabi metallurgist or a craftsman working with cars and be able to converse and easily transact business so language was the common and the bronze age terminologies were all uniting the entire country so take the word like the potadara of the rigveda becoming the podar of bengal the potru ha huh? surprise in tamil lexicon we in slows he say soma what is soma soma manav soma manav means sand containing silver ore can you believe that mm. assam the guy who wrote the great science and civilization of ancient china he says the word assam is soma assam is electron in egypt old egyptian so the i think we have to understand there was a lot of activity that's going on not only with the mesopotamia but also with egypt the shipwreck in ayn sukna which i mentioned with the katamaran made in uh, kerala boat builders i think shows the of 19th century bc shows the contact with uh, egypt so the hieroglyphic that were used by egyptian hieroglyphs the same technology was used for the indescribable hier- hieroglyphs there they used the coptic language here they used the indian languages meluha meluha is mecha mispronunciation is mecha it's prakrit in pre indo aryan po proto indo aryan called prakrit languages which are mentioned in the desi nama mala of yamachandra gujarat so the languages are all together there is a central unity that governed the entire family of languages they united the people they were working together there were no quarrels there were 
working for a common cause and they were enterprising people. They were searching for mineral ores, mineral sources, whether it is in Haifa in Israel or in Alaska or in Anatolia or in Kyrgyzstan or Tocharian. They went around and found out. And I think the investigation of, into the ancient cultures have to be related to the cultural framework of the people who lived in societies. See, if the Balutatar system is so intense, can you find a parallel anywhere in the world for such an astonishing commonwealth that was an operation? It's operational even today. <coughs> in we fact, that's, uh, that really stands out in our discussion today that people had this concept of commonwealth where people will put everything in one place and they would only take what they, what need. they need. So what happens is, in times of dire need, you still have something in the pot left to survive, to move forward. You know, every year is not going to be the same. That, so, that is the strength of the hill. Yes. Dharma. Shreni Dharma means when in, in times of distress, the entire so community will support you. The extended family, it's an extended family system. So we do decry caste. What is a caste? It's a professional groupings of people who have had the common competence. They got together. They created guilds. So the guild system that is operational in India is an astonishing system. That also followed in the Roman guilds. So the gypsies from, from India who yes, went there. Yes, yes. So the Roma. Roma. Right. And there's a beautiful girl of a Roman girl who was returned from America after the issue was stolen from Ankara Zoo, Ankara Museum. So that Roma spirit of working with metals, creating vessels for people and repairing them, they were like, you know, ignorant metal, metal smiths. They will move around from house to house mm. and get the job done for them. Whether it is uh, uh, tanning a brass vessel with some lead, yum, yum, or whatever, or sharpening a knife. Right, right. This was all a household activity where people participated together. Um, in summary, we are talking about the way this, this civilization has thrived over hundreds of years. In fact, uh, what, 6000 BC, 4000 BC to 2000, uh, 1700 AD, so that's about 5700 span, that the fundamental concepts and policies that people have uh, went abided by is the feeling of take what you need and leave it for the society next, rest for the society. And this, this seems to be the uh, sutra, the, the secret to success, where the well-being of a human being, well-being of a society, well-being of a country is defined by that. You are absolutely right here. That is the organizing principle. In fact, the Rashtri Suktam is addressed to Atman, is the Devata. What is Atman? Life principle. Mm. What's the principle that governs your life? You take what you need, but live together. Live for others. Share it. Isa Upanishad says, Tena Taktena Bhunjita. Enjoy through sacrifice. So that seems to be the operating principle, the organizing principle, which contributed to the organizational component of the creation of wealth. Among the four factors of production organization. So this exclusively guild-based organizational system, where the guild will support an artisan in terms of dire, dire need or in terms of uh, wealth creation, share. So this beautiful system of cooperative working together, cooperative works in making it possible for creating new activities, enterprise depending on one's inclinations, proclivities, seems to be the governing principle which made India rich. And it also gave the strength to withstand series of attacks that were taking place. People were coming to this land, uh, land of riches, Swarna Bhumi. Right. So that uh, strength was given only by this organizing principle, the Atman. Atman is the key. It's different from soul. Soul is only a way you explain some phenomenon that exists beyond the life activity that is seen in the right, right. Uh, phenomena. What is that life principle? Atman. Atman is the driving force of life is to make full use of your potential for a common good. I think that principle has been deeply ingrained in the culture of the civilization, which is can be very clearly seen from the historical accounts right from the 7th millennium BC of the Bridana or Kunal. 
Um, such a fascinating, fascinating conversation, um, Dr. Kalyan Raman, and we'll be back with more such uh, conversations. And it, it blows my mind that finally there is someone who's trying to connect all these dots to see that, yes, India was the most wealthy, but how did it get there? And to get there, they had to do all these one, two, three, four things. How did it accomplish those goals? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be back with more such uh, conversations. And uh, sir, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for giving mm -hmm. us the gift of your time to share your thoughts on this subject. Thanks a lot, Ayaji. It's my privilege. I tell you, it's rarely that you come across a person like you who is so intensely, intensely committed to understanding my country. You know, this nation is great, I tell you. We, we, are, we, we have received such a heritage from our Pitros, from our Rishis and Munis. We have got to carry it forward. It's our yes. responsibility. Yes. So, YouTube is uh, responsible for the repository of all these videos. So, we are hoping that they are going to be, be better able to keep it than the two of us. So, but uh, for, future, for the history, we have recorded it. And we will have more such fascinating conversations. In fact, I can tell you some, a couple of topics that I would like to talk to you in our forthcoming uh, talks. One of the things is navigational aids when they did this thing. For instance, I don't think compass or something like compass must have been there. One of the thoughts that I have is like, there is a species of monkey called Devanga. Actually, that's a, um, that's a mischaracterization of a word called Deva Vaka. And the reason they gave that God's voice was because it would, this brand of, this breed of monkey would always sit facing north. So you, that was your compass. You know, in Marathi, mm. the male component is Ratni, it's called Devji. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> the male, female. I see. So Devji. So, uh, so, so that means almost like a divine uh, presence. Right, 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 right. So, you know, they, they, there is, and in fact, the fact that we find that, you know, names like Poda go back from Potadhari mm -hmm. tells us that this is still I intact. It is just, it needs to discover its strengths. It needs to discover its roots. History is all around us. Yes. All around it's us. all around us, yes. And thank you very much, sir. Thank Namaskar. You. Namaskar. Thank you.